Hello everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man with you. Today's episode, we are going vintage, back to the year 1980 by Skyline Toys. This is a two-player, and it's from ages 8 to 80. So if you're 81, I'm sorry, you are too old for this game. It is called Claustrophobia. And in this game, you are trying to enclose your opponent by bringing in little barriers so he cannot move out of the area. That's pretty much what you're doing. But you have three option tokens where you have the option of either rolling again or moving your guy out of harm's way. Let's head on over to the gamer's table where I'm going to show you how to play Claustrophobia. Here we are at the gaming table. Here is Claustrophobia. Let's go ahead and get it all set up here. <clears throat> here is the board for Claustrophobia. And you can, see, you can see here, it comes with, here is the original instructions, which is just front and back, and that is it. So pretty simple. You also have five little barriers that you have for each player. It's a two-player game. So you can have five of each of these barriers, okay, like so. You're also going to have two claustrophobia guys, and you're going to have two of them like this. What you're going to do is you, you put them back to back like this and slide them into the piece here. Which I don't know why you couldn't do one and just print it back to back, but I guess that's the way they did it back in 1980, I guess. So just going to go ahead and slide the guy in just like so. All right, there we go. There's one guy. And you do the other guy where you have the two. You're going to back to back to back here and place it into the red base. Okay, just like so. All right. Ta-da! Okay, you're also going to have a pair of dice, which actually these are the original dice, and the staple is still in there. Wow, this is the first time these dice are going to be rolled. How cool is that? And you, my friends, get to witness it. If I can open this bag. There we go. It's a tough bag. First time to roll these things. Woohoo! All right, there we go. That's a momentous moment right there. Then you're also going to have three chips of each color. These are the option chips. I was missing, actually, a red one and a blue one, so I went ahead and just kind of... Uh, I actually had one in my, my uh, I have a, a, a spare thing that I keep all sorts of dice and stuff in. So I was able to find a red one. Of course, I got a spare blue one here. So each player is going to get three of those. And that's pretty much the components of the game. So let's go ahead and get this set up. So what you're going to do in this game is you're going to place your, I hate the way this is back to back like this. That's kind of, kind of dumb. Okay, so here we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to set it up like so. We're going to go ahead, I'm going to be the blue player. You're going to put your blue, three blue option chips here. Red's going to put their three option chips in front of them. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and place these. You're going to place one of each color on the ends. So on the corners like so. So you're going to put a blue one there and red one there. Okay. Then you're going to go ahead and place two of them here. These are the little blockades that are in the game. And you're going to put two right here. Like so. Okay. All right. There we go. There you have it. Oh, that's why something didn't look right there. <laughs> then you're going to put the starting blue one here and a red one here on the red dot. Okay? And that's how you're going to do it. You're going to have one of each on the corners, and then you'll see the blue dot here. You're going to put the blue one there, and the red dot, you're going to put the red one there. Okay, like so. Then what you're going to do is obviously you're going to roll the dice, see who goes first. Let's just say the blue player goes first. What you're going to do is you're going to roll one die, and you're going to, this is going to determine where your guy is going to be on the board. As you can see, there are numbers on the board, one through six. You see, he rolls, he rolls a five. So blue is gonna start on number five, okay? And then red's gonna roll, oh, it can't be the same number, one. So red's gonna be one right over here, okay? And that's how the game starts. Now what you're gonna do <clears throat> is you're gonna roll the dice. Let's just say it is blue that goes first. Blue's gonna roll the dice and he rolls a five, a four and a one. So what he wants to do is he wants to move these barriers so that so that your opponent cannot move around, okay? So for instance, here he's got four, he's got this route, this route, this route, this route. Of course, this is blocking his route. Try to keep him from going around the board, okay? So that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to make him claustrophobic. So in this case, you have a one and a four. So what you can do is since he's blue, he's gonna start moving his little barriers towards the red guy, okay? Just try to keep him locked in. So let's just say, 
if he has a one and a four, what he can do is he can move one of these, either one, he can move one of them four, or he can one, move one of them all five. Let's just say he's going to do all five. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now the red guy is blocked from going this way. Okay. So now he's not able to go that way. And that would be his turn. Now, and then red would go ahead and roll. He rolls a seven, two and a five. So what he can do is he can start maneuvering towards the red guy. So let's just say he goes, okay, I want to move this one, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And that's how he does that. Now, and that's pretty much what you're going to do. You're going to take turns. You're going to start moving these little barriers towards the player so he can't get out. Now, let's just say we're playing, you know, we're future in here. Let's just say he has one here. Okay. And he's got one here. And let's just say this red one's coming over this way. Okay. Like so. Okay, there we go. So now he only has a couple ways to go. Okay, so he only has, well, technically, I guess he only has this way. But once he goes this way, he can go this way, he can go this way. So he, he could pretty much escape at this point. Now, let's just say you want to use one of your option chips. These option chips you use, obviously, three times in a game. You have two options. Okay, you can either roll again, or you can choose to move your guy to a different number, as long as he has a path to that number. So say it's starting to get a little claustrophobic. These players are starting to move in on him. And so, like I say, this one's here. That way he can't go that way. Then what happens is, what he can do is he can say, I'm going to, at the beginning of his turn, okay, be beginning of the turn, before you even roll the dice, you're going to say, he's going to say, I want to declare my option, okay, before you even start your turn. So in that game, he doesn't have to say what his option is going to be. First, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my, my chips. He puts it aside. He's going to do his normal turn. Does his normal turn. Does two and four. He's going to go ahead and move his little barriers. And then he's going to announce what his intentions are. Am I going to roll again or am I going to move my guy? Let's just say he goes, I want to move my guy to three. Okay. He does have a path to three. So what he can do is he can go ahead and move his guy to three. Okay, and just like that, now all of a sudden the game has completely changed. Everyone, all your barriers are over here. Now you got to start bringing those barriers over this way, okay? So there is the option of the two options you can use for the chip. As you can say, I'm going to declare an action. And you're going to go ahead and slide this over here. You're going to do your normal turn. Move your barriers. And then you mention, I'm going to roll again. Or I'm going to move my guy. And as long as you have a path, like for him... He wouldn't be able to get to five. If he wanted to declare a move, okay, he would not be able to get to five because this red barrier is there. He wouldn't be able to get to, uh, to two over here because this barrier is blocking that. And this barrier, or actually, yeah, this barrier is blocking this. Now, you can accidentally block yourself in. So you got to be careful about that, okay? And then, but he can go to four because there's a clear way there. All right, so that's the, probably the only way you can really go <laughs> at this point. Because you can go on the outside too if you can, but I got a barrier there and a barrier there. So you can't move either way that way either. Okay, so you got to make sure you have a clear path to a number if you want to announce um, that you want to declare a, a different move. Okay, so that is pretty much the game is you're maneuvering your guys around, you're moving these little guys around. And like I said, this, if you land on this circle here, okay, this barrier is not going to stop the person because if you're here, he can still go around the barrier. Okay. So when your barrier's on a number, you can't do it. You can't block, okay? Now, on he these spaces, yes. Okay? Also, two of these barriers cannot be on the same like this. Okay? You cannot have it on the same. Now, when you're moving the barriers, like you're moving them like this, you can go up and over another barrier and a guy as well. Okay? So you can go one, two, three, four, five like this. You can do that. If there's a barrier here, you know, you can count that as well. You go one, two, three, four, five. If you have enough spaces to go over, up and over, you can do that. Okay, that is, that is legal. Okay, but the only time a barrier really can't block is if it's on an actual number. Because that, that guy can actually go around you like this. So, also in this game, if you roll doubles, let's just say you roll the double, you do get to roll again. So that is a very powerful tool in this game. That if you do roll doubles, you do get to roll again. And a circle with a number on it. All right. 
And that's pretty much the game. You're pretty much trying to get your guys where they're going to be moving on in here until he cannot move no longer. Something like this. That would pretty much cause a claustrophobia. He can't go through this way. He can't go here, 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 or here. He's done. And that would be the end of the game. Okay. And that, my friends, is claustrophobia. Let's head on over to the game room and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, and my final thoughts on claustrophobia. Well, I like the uniqueness of it. I don't know if I've ever seen any other game like it, honestly, um, where you're moving little barriers and you're trying to keep your guy in there. I, 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 that's interesting. I, it is an interesting part of the game. Um, it kind of looks like a 70s game, but then again, it is 1980, so it's a very, very beginning of the 80s, so it kind of has like a 70s look to it. Um, but I do, I mean, there's some things I like about it. Like I said, the uniqueness, um, moving the barriers around, using one die or two die for, for one of them, um, how you can use your option ships to either, I'm out of here, but you got to have that clear path in order to get out of there too. So, and then all of a sudden the whole game almost starts over again when you move your guy out of harm's way. You're like, uh oh, now you got to start moving the barriers over there. Oh, now you got to start moving the barriers over here. So that aspect is pretty cool. Um... Am I going to keep this in my collection? That is a good question. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm on the fence about it. I mean, I'm not eager to say, oh, I'm just going to get rid of it. I mean, it is a cool game. It's very different. On the thumb meter, I think I might have to give it a sideways thumb. Actually, let's go this way. There we go. A sideways thumb on this one. Um, just because, you know, it's it's not so riveting. You know, it's not like, yeah! You know, I mean, it, it's... Kind of, okay, let me move these guys. Oh, you moved your guy over there. Okay, let's move back over here and do it again. So, I'm kind of in between the thumbs up, thumbs down type thing. And like I said, I'm on the fence whether I'm going to keep it or not. I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's not a terrible game. And I do like that, uh, you know, the originality of it. I don't know if I've ever seen it. If you've, if you've seen a game out there that's similar to this, uh, put it down in the comments. I'd like to be, you know, if there is anything remotely close to trying to get someone, you know, claustrophobic in there. Um... But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and a lot of you probably didn't even know this game even existed. I know I didn't. Uh, this was actually a part of a lot that I bought from somebody back when I was living in California. And I was like, what is this? It was missing a couple of little chips. That's easy to replace. That's not a big deal. I went ahead and put them in there. But thank you so much for watching this episode. I appreciate it. If, you've, if you have the game, let me know. If you've never had the game and maybe you might be interested in getting it, uh, let me know down in the comments down below. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, happy gaming!